All right, welcome back. Um, the last thing we're going to do in Chapter 2 is sort of a short version of Section 2.7. 2.7 is about inverse functions, inverse sort of sounds like reverse. Um, and that is not a coincidence. An inverse function is essentially a reverse function. What we're doing is we are sort of flipping the roles. So an inverse function, we could think of it as we're sort of flipping the input and the output, or sort of said another way, right, we're sort of flipping our x's and y's, right? So we're flipping the domain and the range. Um, so for example, right, if I just did this with like coordinates, if I, if I don't necessarily have a formula, right, but if I have f of two equals like negative three, right? So the idea here is my x value is two, the output, right, my y value is minus three, then my inverse function, um, Oh, and I didn't say what that's supposed to look like. Um, so inverse function is going to be so it's f with this little minus one. So it's sort of it looks like it's f to the minus one. Um, there's some notation things that are kind of getting uh, that are sort of easy to get mixed up here, right? A negative one power means flip the function in as much as like take the reciprocal, right? Turn it into a fraction. Um, so this is inverse, not as a not as a flipping, not like a reciprocal flip, but we're, we're changing our roles, right? Of the x's and the y's. So if f of two, right, takes me to minus three, when the x is two, I end up at negative three. So then what would happen is f inverse of the negative three, is going to go backwards to 2, right? So what's happening is that the roles here are getting reversed. My function, the like path, if we think about those like, um, right, we made the like columns of like x's and y's and we had the sort of like spider chart with the different like arrows going across. An inverse function is going to not, is going to sort of send the y values back towards the x values. That's the basic idea. Um, we're not going to get too deep into sort of what this like means. What we're going to be doing is really just finding an inverse function algebraically. So Obviously, you could kind of look at graphs for these things. There's lots of different ways you can do it. If you have just like x, y coordinates, you can essentially just like flip the rolls around, right? Flip the positions of the x's and the y's. Um, but if we have a formula, we'd like to know what essentially the sort of inverse formula is going to be. What's the reverse like function going to look like? Um, so let's start with a pretty simple example, right? Let's say f of x is just like a nice kind of linear function. So maybe it's something like 2x minus 10. So maybe that's our like starting function. So what's going to happen algebraically is essentially we need to sort of reverse whatever algebra is in this formula. If we're trying to sort of reverse the function, right, take the inverse value, sort of do the mapping backwards, well what that means for our algebra steps is the algebra steps are essentially also going to be reversed and and so what that's going to look like right is the opposite of all of the different things we're doing if we're, if we're if we're doing multiply by 2 we're probably going to have a division by 2 if if we have a minus 10 well then in the inverse function we're probably going to have a plus 10 um, the order of operations matters so it's not just a matter of like flipping everything to its like opposite operation we need to be a little bit more thoughtful about the order that we do that um, so the strategy here is, so start with this, um, what you're going to do is rewrite it as, um, so we'll call this, right, y equals 
2 times x minus 10. So we'll be more clear about, right, f of x is supposed to be a y value, right? 2 times x, x, our x value is here. So this is really a y and an x. And so if what we're doing is we're sort of reversing the roles of the x's and the y's, um, the sort of book suggestion is flip our x's and y's, right? So the inverse function is going to be the same essentially math form. We're just going to flip the roles of the x's and the y's. So I'm going to write this as x equals 2 times y minus 10. I'm not changing any of the operations yet, right? I'm just flipping the like roles. This is really just kind of a mental trick because what we're going to do is take that and then just like solve for y equals yada yada yada. We're just going to rewrite this and like solve it for the y. So the basic idea is we're, we're, we're strategically just undoing all of the math that's here. Um, we're trying to sort of solve this for the other variable and we're kind of just flipping the roles of the variables just to make it seem a little bit more natural, right? We're, we're kind of used to solving for a y variable so we're, we're just kind of doing this little bit of a visual change to accomplish that and just sort of make it seem more natural. So what are the steps to do that? Well, like we said before, we're just going to reverse everything that's here. So that for us is going to mean, okay, so like plus 10 to both sides, right? To sort of cancel out the 10s. So that means x plus 10 equals this like 2 times y. And then, okay, how do I get rid of, right? Uh, a multiplication by 2 and the answer is well I'm just going to divide by 2 and I, I need to divide everything on the left by 2 that gives me it'll give me sort of two different ways to write it um, so I can just call this x plus 10 over 2 uh, or if I wanted to flip it right I could call this x over 2 plus like 5 right either one of those is fine and on the other side I get my like y value right y equals either of these things. Let me shake this up so you guys can actually see a little better. So I've essentially reversed my operation, right? So what I'm just going to do then is kind of relabel and this becomes right so y is like f inverse of x and this becomes uh, let's just stick with this x plus 10 over 2 I guess. That seems perfectly fine to me. that maybe has the most obvious relationship back to the original. So my inverse is going to look like this. Um, once you have it, you, you can do a little bit of like a spot check. You can do a more official check if you want by like doing a composition of these two things. They should essentially undo each other and you're going to end up with just like single x. Um, rather than go deep into the algebra there low, if, if we just sort of pick a specific point, so let's do f of x is like what x is positive 2, right? That would be 2 times 2 minus 10. So that's just like 4 minus 10 is like negative 6. So x equals 2, right, is going to take me back to negative 6. So this should be my like x and my y. So then the check is in my inverse function. If I put in negative 6 into my new formula, am I going to end up back at the 2 where I started? So let's check it. So negative 6 plus 10 all over 2. That's going to leave me with 4 over 2, right? Positive 4 over 2 does, in fact, get me back to positive 2, right? So I've just gone either 2 to negative 6 or in the inverse, reversed it from negative 6 to 2. This is just a single point, right? Obviously, if, if you, know, you want, you can do this sort of multiple times and then technically, right, the official thing we should be doing is more of a composition to sort of check this. But that's the basics of it. So finding an inverse.